Hi, this is Sunil Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. If you look at Kubernetes landscape, it has, it has matured now. It's, it's deployed, it's used in production, and now we are seeing emergence of storage solutions for Kubernetes. Uh, today we have with us uh, Jitin Vadya, co-founder and CEO of Planet Scale. We have spoken earlier, uh, you are involved with Project Vitesse, which was contributed to uh, uh, CNCF. Uh, so I want to understand the, the first of all evolution of Planet Scale since we met last time and <laughs> we have not spoken, we should have. So what all was going on there and then why this uh, database solution? To, so just you know, walk us through the quick brief history of <laughs> what happened in these few months. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Swapnil. Um, it's great to be here on your program. And uh, since we talked last, um, uh, I think Planet Scale uh, has come a long way. Uh, two major things that I would like to point out. First is uh, our database as a service, a fully managed database as a service based on Vitesse. Um, and because it's based on Vitesse, it's MySQL compatible uh, that we built um, and we call Planet Scale DB is now fully live on three different clouds and 12 regions worldwide. And uh, because it's based on Vitesse, it's hyperscale, it's very highly available. Um, and we, well, we call it true multi-cloud. And what we mean by that is that you can actually distribute your masters and replicas for a given database across multiple cloud providers. And not only across regions in a single cloud provider, we allow you to do that also, but also across multiple cloud providers. And this allows uh, people uh, the ability to have disaster recovery with a single click, as well as it frees them up from vendor lock-in. And in today's world, um, and by that I mean COVID, um, uh, disaster recovery and disaster preparedness and resiliency has become really top of the mind. And we uh, help you do that. And uh, so this we announced about uh, uh, three, uh, three months ago, and uh, that's going really well. And uh, today, uh, uh, or rather just a week ago, we announced what we call Planet Scale DB for Kubernetes. And so the, the, these are the two, and today mostly we will be talking about the Planet Scale DB for Kubernetes, I believe. Also, when we initially talked about Kubernetes, it was more or less seen like mostly stateless workloads. Uh, so now we are talking about a stateful workload, that's what. So what has changed that now you need Kubernetes native databases as well? So you don't particularly, I mean, the thing is that the reason that people did not run databases or stateful workloads in Kubernetes is because people thought that it was a hard problem to solve. And we solved that problem using Vitesse when we needed to run YouTube's databases under Borg uh, which is the container orchestration system that Google uses and which is the blueprint for Kubernetes, right? So from very early on, Vitesse was a great solution for run, running stateful workloads uh, in Kubernetes. Uh, HubSpot has been running their databases in Kubernetes for the last two and a half years. So has been JD.com, right? And when we decided at planet scale that we are going to run a database as a service on top of Vitesse, the technology choice that we made was also Kubernetes. So our own database as a service, Planet Scale DB, which runs in three different clouds across 12 different regions. One of the reasons that we can treat these regions sort of um, uh, similarly to each other is because we are running on top of Kubernetes, which is the abstraction layer. And we have developed a very robust operator uh, using the operator framework that allows us to treat all these regions uniformly and that's why we can uh, build out uh, the our own database as a service on top of Kubernetes. So the answer to your question is that there was this feeling that it's difficult to run stateful workloads well in Kubernetes. And now um, us and maybe other folks have figured out how to do it. Um, and once you know how to run stateful workloads, run stateful workloads well in Kubernetes, there are multiple advantages, right? First, you, you don't have to run your databases now as quote unquote pets. You can run them as cattle, just the way you would run your application servers, right? Um, the uniform deployment infrastructure that is Kubernetes, you can take advantage of that for your for your databases. You don't need to maintain specific bespoke environments for your databases. 
Um, you are running your databases adjacent to your application servers, so you get better latency. So there are many advantages once you figure out how to run stateful services well in Kubernetes. And we now with Kubernetes for PlanScaleDB for Kubernetes, allow you to run your databases in your own Kubernetes clusters, you know, not in our clusters. And so adjacent to your own application servers within your network parameters so that your own security policies are uh, applicable. All of this with the ease and convenience of a managed service. So you're using our control plane and your data plane. And um, you know we take care of backups, restores, and all the other repetitive management tasks, the care and feeding of databases that you need to do so that you can run production-worthy databases in Kubernetes. Database is kind of a solved problem. There are already <laughs> major you know, monopolies in when it comes to database. Uh, when we talk about database, you talk about file objects. You know, then we already have like Ceph is there, and there are a lot of other open source solutions that are already there. So why do we need to create you know something like Plan and Skill DB, which is clouded? You why not leverage the existing technologies? Or you are actually leveraging a lot of existing technologies, but it is much more optimized for the cloud work. So the thing is that like one of the biggest things that we are proud of is that we are not re reinventing the wheel. Right, MySQL, which is a well-known, well-understood open source uh, database technology, um, we use that as the underlying data storage. Vitesse itself has been open source for the last 10 years, and it has been running pr production workloads at very high QPS at companies like YouTube, Slack, Square, um, Pinterest, uh, HubSpot, JD.com, GitHub. Uh, so uh, many, many companies have staked their uh, company's transactional data on top of Vitesse and MySQL. And so PlanetScaleDB is just, you know, we are offering you a service based on battle-tested technology with operational scaffolding that makes it really easy for you to deploy these databases across clouds. Um, and you can start small, right? If you're a small company, you can start small and we, we grow with you to hyperscale, right? So um, it's my, and because it's MySQL compatible, there isn't, you know, you don't need to make changes to your application. So that's our value proposition. Why do you think this was the right time to announce that? So PlanetScaleDB for Kubernetes, which we are announcing now, I think because of COVID, as I told you, more and more companies are uh, accelerating their plans to move to the cloud. They're accelerating their plan, digital transformation plans, uh, which typically involves moving into Kubernetes. And uh, they are looking for solutions so that they don't have to treat their databases as uh, pets, uh, right? Uh, and so this sort of dovetails really well with this need in the market where uh, people want the ability to run their databases uh, in Kubernetes adjacent to their application servers uh, without having to A, worry about running a stateful service in Kubernetes, we have solved that, and B, just automation around all the usual um, management tasks that you need to make to, to do to run the database well, such as backups, restores, and uh, application of patches and so on. So we take care of all of that as though it's a, um, a SaaS service, uh, as a, a hosted service, but the databases, the database pods run in your Kubernetes cluster in inside your network perimeter within your uh, security uh, parameters. So that, that's, that's, that's why this is the right time to, uh, we think that, uh, you know, it's, it, the timing works. Yeah, because there is a lot of need that right now, a lot of companies are thinking is scaling down, but this is where a lot of companies, uh, organizations need help to stay functional and operational and keep us, uh, you know. Now, I want to talk a bit about the technical aspect of Planet Scale DB. Can you talk about what are the core components? So Planet Scale DB uh, has, as I said, you know, three, uh, very well-known and uh, well-regarded open source projects, um, MySQL, Vitesse, and Kubernetes. And Kubernetes and Vitesse are both part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And uh, so uh, those are the components that go, go into PlanetScaleDB. What we have built is a pretty sophisticated control plane that allows you to define, you know, first it supports multiple clusters. 
So typically a company has need for dev staging and production clusters, and they want different people to have different level of uh, permissions associated with those clusters. They also want to have different resources associated with uh, databases in those clusters. You know, you typically want your dev databases to be small, uh, but a lot of them, and you probably want to have all your developers access to your dev cluster. Staging a smaller subset, production, you want to really treat it very, very uh, differently. And you also typically might, you might want to have it uh, spread across clouds for disaster recovery. You might want to have a uh, num number of shards, which is much higher. You might want to have the amount of resources that you are specifying for each uh, database um, to be much higher, so on and so forth. So all of that, we uh, allow you to configure using this uh, notion of clusters, so multiple clusters. And within each cluster, you can have multiple databases and the whole RBAC uh, experience around that. Uh, as well as, you know, we have Prometheus running, um, we have Grafana, so you get really high observability uh, built into it right from the beginning. And we, we also have the same thing for PlanetScaleDB for Kubernetes. You know, we start Grafana and we start um, uh, Prometheus so that in, you know how the databases are performing in your own cluster. And all of this happens with, you know, one click. Um, uh, we allow you, we have a fairly robust uh, security um, uh, posture, and uh, we are in the process of working towards getting the various certifications that you need as a database company. Um, uh, we are also uh, in the process of uh, building out what we call quick starts so that you can uh, create a cluster uh, some databases, apply schema, apply vSchema, add in some um, uh, test data so that you can start experiencing a particular application or a particular example uh, for, for a framework very, very quickly. This will also be useful for folks to populate their own dev environments and so on. Um, so that is coming. Uh, we are also, uh, migration tools are coming, which will allow you to run Vitesse as a proxy in front of your Cloud SQL or RDS MySQL or RDS Aurora databases, just to see whether uh, you can run queries through Vitesse uh, to the, these databases, as well as migration tools that allow you to migrate to uh, in and out of the PlanetScaleDB databases. So these are the various features of PlanetScaleDB. Awesome. Now, is it, uh... Uh, will you be offering it as a product, software product that people can install, or it, will there be as a service? What will be the model? Correct. So PlanetScale DB uh, Cloud is our multi-tenant service where you come in, you swipe your credit card, uh, you you know you create an account, you invite users to the account, you create multiple clusters, define your databases, and deploy them, and they get deployed. In our, you know, it's it's just like a database as a service, fully managed multi-tenant database as a service. That's our PlanetScale DB cloud. PlanetScale DB for Kubernetes is very similar. You use the same control plane, but what you do is you define a custom region by giving us access to your uh, Kubernetes cluster. So you are running your own Kubernetes cluster, maybe in one of the cloud providers, or maybe on OpenShift or something like that or Tanzu in, in your own data centers, right? So what you do is you define a region. We, we give you a script that you run in your Kubernetes cluster, uh, and that creates certain roles and RBACs and so on, and that creates uh, an output which you copy and paste into the control plane. And we configure your Kubernetes cluster as a region. And so then you once that region is defined, it's a matter of just defining databases the way you otherwise would in PlanetScaleDB control plane. Hey, I want a database with four shards. Each shard should have one master and three replica, this much CPU, this much disk, this much memory for each of them. And when you click deploy, the actual pods for running that database, instead of getting started in our uh, regions you know, that we, we own, they get started in the custom region that you have created. So all those pods and those databases, uh, along with, um, uh, the necessary services that you need to start, or load balancer that you have, load balancers that you have configured, as well as Prometheus, Grafana, all those pods, everything gets started in your own Kubernetes cluster, 
And while you are defining the region, you can also tell us how you want the backups to be configured. And so that, you know, we can start, we start taking backups with the frequency that has been configured. So, um, and everything is now running in your Kubernetes cluster. And uh, we, we can configure it two ways. I mean, uh, right now, there is no actually uh, ping back into the control panel um, so that uh, you can be assured of the secrecy uh, or assured of the security rather. And, um, but we have plans about, I mean, if you want us to monitor and manage those databases, we would pull out the telemetry from Prometheus and uh, we would uh, we, we would carry the pager for your database clusters, but that is coming. So this is how the planet scale DB for Kubernetes works by creating custom regions. Awesome. It, it, it's, you not only explain what it is, you also kind of gave me a rough roadmap. What are, what are the things we should be expecting in the future? Uh, we are in mid of 2020 and the year has been crazy. I don't know whether it's January or March or May or June or July or December. <laughs> I have no idea. So it's hard to say what the year would look like. But from the cloud notice perspective, as you already mentioned in the beginning, the how the industry will change, uh, what do you think uh, to 2020 brings to the cloud native world. How do you see the evolution that is going on here? I think in general, the trend is going to be uh, more and more self-managed software. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking even in terms of how software is sold, um, rather than uh, you needing, uh, you know, more face-to-face -face interaction, either, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot more emphasis on webinars. Products will have features uh, which allow you to experience the value in the product much more quickly uh, rather than somebody, you know, a salesperson coming and setting up a demo or something like that. I think uh, companies would build uh, features in their products that allow uh, the customers to see the value through self-service. So I think, um, the whole way we uh, sell and position and build products will have impacts uh, because you cannot have a face-to-face -face interactions. I mean, in in-person interactions uh, with with people. Excellent. Uh, yeah, you're you're fully. I, I fully agree with you. And I think a lot of things will change, as you mentioned. One to one is going a webinar and all those online things. And that's why when we are moving more towards the video visual content because it's very rich. Uh, Jiten, thank you so much for uh, talk, uh, taking time out and talking to me today. Uh, as I said, uh, I wish we spoke more last time, but I look forward to talk to you because uh, if I'm not wrong, <laughs> a lot of new things will be coming out of Planet Scale. Absolutely. Likewise, thank you very much for having me on the show. And I really enjoyed our chat. Thank you, Sopni.